Cordless angle grinders are great, but it takes a lot of batteries to tackle those bigger jobs. So the question is, which corded angle grinder is the best? Let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which grinder cuts through rebar the fastest. Then we'll compare tool reaction torque when powering up the grinders. Finally, we'll see which tools can survive the maximum torque test. At a bargain price of only $15, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is the Warrior brand, which is sold by Harbor Freight. All the angle grinders we'll be testing are designed for four and a half inch wheels. The Warrior has an all ball bearing motor for smooth running, long life. To adjust the blade guard angle, you have to loosen the screw. Slide switch with lock on. Cast aluminum gearbox and durable plastic body. Two position slide handle for added comfort and control. 4.3 amp motor with up to 12,000 RPM. And the Warrior weighs 3 pounds, 3.2 ounces. At 24 inches from the sound meter, the Warrior isn't too loud for an angle grinder at 88.7 decibels. And the Warrior made it to 10,500 RPM or 1,500 less RPM than advertised. Let's compare cutting speed using a tester I put together. Everything moves nice and smoothly and I'll level the tools before the test begins. The bracket holding the rebar is extremely secure, preventing movement to avoid interfering with test accuracy. So let's challenge the grinders with 10 pounds of force cutting through half inch rebar. I'll be using a four and a half inch by 0.45 inch cutting wheel. And each grinder will get a new cutoff wheel. And the Harbor Freight Warrior lost a lot of RPM and sounds as though it might stall. However, the Warrior didn't give up and finished the cut in 14 seconds. At a price of $27, or almost twice as much as the Warrior, is this Win brand. Just like the Warrior, the Win also has a lock-on switch. The Arbor adapter allows grinding wheels for both 5 8 and 7 8 inch Arbors. Has a 7 amp motor that generates up to 11,000 RPM. And the Win weighs 4 pounds, 4.5 ounces. And the Win is right at 90.4 decibels. And the Win made it to 10,390 RPM, or 610 less than advertised. And the Win has a 7 amp motor, giving it a pretty big advantage over the Warrior. From the sound of the electric motor, the Win still experienced a pretty big RPM drive. And the wind made the cut at over 3 seconds faster than the Warrior at 10.7 seconds. At a price of $29 or just $2 more than the Win is this Black & Decker brand. The Win has a 7 amp motor, but the Black & Decker has a 6. Instead of loosening a screw to adjust the blade guard with the Black & Decker, there's a lever you can use to make the process easy. The switch on the Black & Decker has a carve-up for the thumb. This really makes activating the switch a very easy process. Includes a 3 position side handle, up to 10,000 RPM. The Black & Decker is pretty light at 3 pounds, 8.5 ounces. And the Black & Decker is the loudest yet at 98.7 decibels. The Black & Decker spins faster than advertised at 10,182 RPM. And the Black & Decker sure sounds like it's doing a better job at maintaining a high blade speed compared to the Win. And the Black & Decker makes the cut in 6 seconds and takes the lead from the Win. At a price of $33 is this Porter K. Cable. Includes a three position side handle. Soft start for smooth startup. Tool free guard change for easy changes and repositioning. It has a six amp motor and operates at 12,000 RPM. And the Porter Cable weighs three pounds and 10 ounces. The Porter Cable is the loudest yet at 99.7 decibels. And the Porter Cable made it to 10,504 RPM. And the Porter Cable held pretty good blade speed. And the Porter Cable takes the lead from the Black & Decker at 5.1 seconds to make the cut. At a price of $60, or four times as much as the Warrior, is this Rigid brand. Includes a lifetime warranty. Has a ramp slide switch on the side for easy operation. Slim body design for comfortable usage. The Rigid has an 8 amp motor capable of 11,000 RPM. And the Rigid is just over 5 pounds. The Rigid is pretty loud at 98.2 decibels. And the Rigid spins faster than advertised at 12,065 RPM. And the 12,000 RPM Rigid shredded the rebar in only 3.8 seconds, taking the lead from the Porter Cable. At a price of $60, the same price as the Rigid, is this Ryobi brand. Lock on button for user comfort during extended use. The blade change tool can be stored inside the handle. Die cast aluminum housing for maximum gear durability. The Rigid has an 8 amp motor, the Ryobi has a 7.5. And the Ryobi is lighter than the Rigid at 4 pounds, 12.9 ounces. Compared to some of the other brands, the Ryobi is pretty quiet at 88.9 decibels. And the Ryobi makes more RPM than advertised at 11,139. And the Ryobi began bogging down quite a bit when it made contact with the rebar. 6.7 seconds to make the cut. At a price of $92, is this DeWalt brand. Instead of using a blade change tool, the DeWalt comes with an Allen key. The DeWalt offers two different handle positions. Changing the blade guard does not require tools. The DeWalt has an 11 amp motor capable of 11,000 RPM. The DeWalt weighs five pounds and four ounces. And the DeWalt only made it to 10,334 RPM. And the DeWalt makes a lot of noise at 99 decibels. And the 10,000 RPM DeWalt lost some blade speed, but it still blasted through the rebar in 4.3 seconds to move into second place behind the rigid. At a price of $123, is this Metabo brand. You can change the blade guard angle without using tools. Unlike the other brands, the Metabo uses a paddle switch. 
Includes an automatic mechanical safety clutch, capable of 11,000 RPM. The Metabo weighs 5 pounds, 4.7 ounces. And the Metabo is even lighter than the Porter Cable at 99.7 decibels. 9,740, no load RPM for the Metabo. And the 11 amp motor on the Metabo maintained pretty good blade speed and made the cut in 4.8 seconds. So a half a second slower than the DeWalt. At a price of $133 is this Milwaukee brand. Includes a slim grip design to improve control and reduce fatigue. The Milwaukee even includes a tool bag. Tool-free burst-resistant guard for easy adjustments. Electronic clutch extends tool life and prevents bind-up. Overload protection maximizes motor life. Includes a soft start to avoid sudden movements during startup. Includes a powerful 11-amp motor. Up to 10,000 no-load RPM. And a Milwaukee is the heaviest yet at 5 pounds, 7 ounces. 98.8 decibels for the Milwaukee. And the Milwaukee makes more RPM than advertised at 11,302. And the Milwaukee has a higher no-load speed than the DeWalt, but the Milwaukee lost a lot of blade speed making the cut. 5 seconds for the Milwaukee. At a price of $149 is this Hilti brand. You can change the angle of the blade guard without tools. Offers two different handle positions. Includes a powerful 6 amp motor, up to 11,500 no load RPM. And the Hilti weighs 4 pounds, 12.3 ounces. And the Hilti is relatively quiet at 91.8 decibels. And the Hilti made it to 10,510 RPM. And the Hilti only has a 6 amp motor compared to 11 amps for the DeWalt Metabo in Milwaukee. And the Hilti lost a lot of blade speed, making the cut in 7.5 seconds. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Makita, SJS High Powered Grinder. SJS technology is a mechanical clutch system that helps prevent motor and gear damage by allowing the drive shaft to slip if the wheel is forced to stop. Soft start electric motor suppresses startup reaction. Includes a powerful 13 amp motor. The Makita is the heaviest yet at 5 pounds, 9.5 ounces. And the Makita is the quietest tool yet at 88.4 decibels. And the Makita spins a little bit slower than advertised at 9,832 RPM. And the Makita claims to be a high powered grinder in it made the fastest cut yet at 2.98 seconds. Very impressive. So with a cutoff wheel and 10 pounds of force, the Makita made the fastest cut in 2.98 seconds. Rigid was the second fastest at 3.8, DeWalt 4.3, Metabo 4.8, and Milwaukee 5 seconds. Most of the grinders have a barrel grip, which can be hard to grip with just one hand. So let's compare the startup torque in our first test. And the 4.3 amp warrior rolled over, but the startup torque isn't too bad. Let's get an actual torque measurement using this torque adapter. And the tool reaction torque on the warrior isn't too bad at only 3 inch pounds. And the wind seems just as motivated as the Warrior. And the wind performed the same as the Warrior at 3 inch pounds. And the Black and Decker is more motivated than a drill sergeant and nearly came off the table. 4 inch pounds of tool reaction. The Porter Cable seems just about as motivated as the Black and Decker. 3 inch pounds, the same as the Warrior and the wind. And the Ridza did a flip and nearly threw itself off the table. Definitely recommend maintaining a secure grip with two hands with the Ridget. And the Ridget has more than twice the tool reaction torque compared to the other brands at 9 inch pounds. And the Ryobi rolled over, but it didn't get too excited like most of the other brands. And the startup torque is just too low for the torque adapter. And the DeWalt seems just as motivated as the Black & Decker. 5 inch pounds of torque is a little bit higher than average. And the Metabo seems even more fired up to get to work compared to the DeWalt. 6 inch pounds of tool reaction. And the Milwaukee has a built-in safety feature that won't allow the tool to power up when it's first plugged in if the switch is already in the on position. I'll go ahead and throw out the test results since applying pressure to the switch may have thrown off the accuracy of the test. Just like the Milwaukee, the Hilti also has a built-in safety feature. Applying pressure to the switch did interfere with the test accuracy, so I'll throw out the test results. And the Makita rolled over gently compared to most of the other brands. And the Makita startup torque is just too low to be measured by the torque adapter. If you're looking for a tool that offers the least amount of tool reaction, the Ryobi and the Makita offer the softest starts. The Warrior Wind and Porter Cable didn't react too much at only 3 inch pounds. We'd better go ahead and test tool vibration and wheel stop speeds since some of the tools may not survive the maximum tool torque test. Tool vibration can cause user fatigue and discomfort and the Warrior isn't too bad at 129 meters per second squared. And the Wind vibrates quite a bit more than the Warrior at 157. And the Black & Decker has a pretty bad case of the shakes at 205. And the Porter Cable has done the best yet at just over 100. And the Rigid shakes more than most of the other brands at 175. And the Ryobi is by far the smoothest yet at around 12 meters per second squared. And the DeWalt vibrates the most of all the brands yet at 271. And the Metabo shakes more than most of the other brands at 217. And the Milwaukee did better than average at 144. And the Hilti did a lot better than average at only 85. And the Makita is even smoother than the Hilti at only 70. If tool vibration is a factor in your purchasing decision, the Roby did by far the best at only 12 meters per second squared. The Makita, Hilti, and Porter Cable also performed very well. Having an angle grinder that comes to a stop quickly is a pretty good safety feature, and it can actually speed up work at times. 7.3 seconds for the Warrior.
And the win came to a stop in only 5.9 seconds or 1.4 seconds faster than the Warrior. And the Black & Decker is 2 seconds faster to stop than the Warrior at 5.3 seconds. And the Porter Cable tied the Black & Decker at only 5.3 seconds. And the Ridge has a pretty high no load speed of 12,000 RPM and it took longer to stop than most of the other brands at 6.4 seconds. And the Roby is even slower to come to a stop than the Ridget at 7 seconds. And the Dwalt came to a stop in 6.7 seconds or about 1.5 seconds slower than the Leaders. And the Metabo came to a stop the fastest yet in only 5.1 seconds. And the Milwaukee is even faster coming to a stop than the Metabo in only 4.6 seconds. And the Hilti is even faster to come to a stop compared to the Metabo and the Milwaukee in only 3.4 seconds. And the Makita needs about twice as long to stop compared to the Hilti in 6.2 seconds. So the angle grinder that comes to a stop the fastest is the Hilti in 3.4 seconds. Milwaukee finished in second at 4.6 and Metabo 5.1 seconds. Let's test the maximum torque and working load of the grinders next, cutting through rebar with a quarter inch thick grinding wheel. I'll use a new wheel on each of the grinders. For the low amp grinders, I'll start off with just 10 pounds. And the Warrior did just fine with 10 pounds of force, so let's try 15. And 15 pounds is just too much for the Warrior, and the Warrior is smoking. And the wind makes more than enough torque to handle 10 and 15 pounds. So I'll use a new piece of rebar along with 20 pounds and a new grinding disc. And the wind lost a lot of blade speed and is barely holding on, but it survived the test. 16.5 seconds to grind through the rebar. Just like the wind, the Black & Decker lost a lot of blade speed on this test. And the Black & Decker is right at 2 seconds faster than the wind at 14.5 seconds. And the Porter Cable is performing well for a 6 amp motor. And the Porter Cable is a little bit slower than the Black & Decker at 15.2 seconds. Once again, the high revving Rigid is making quick work of the rebar. And the Rigid takes the lead and is over 4 seconds faster than the Black & Decker at only 10.4 seconds. And the Roby lasted about 2 seconds before suddenly coming to a stop. And the Roby's electric motor is glowing red and is puffing smoke. <laughs> Unfortunately, the brushes in the Roby are finished. And the Dwalt just doesn't have as much blade speed compared to the Rigid and it lost some blade speed when hitting the rebar. And the Dwalt did good enough to move into second place behind the Rigid at 14.4 seconds. And the Metabo seems to be holding blade speed a little bit better than the Dwalt. And the Metabo finished the job in 12.6 seconds to move into second place behind the Rigid. And the Milwaukee also seems to be holding blade speed better than the Dewalt. And the Milwaukee moves into a two-way tie with the Metabo at 12.6 seconds. And 20 pounds is just too much for the Hilti. Once the Hilti stalled, I gave it two more chances to power through the rebar, but the Hilti ran out of steam. And Makita shrugged off the 20 pounds of force and held great blade speed. And Makita made the fastest cut yet in only 5.82 seconds. Very impressive. If you're looking for a grinder with the most torque and cutting speed, the Makita came out on top at 5.82 seconds. The Rigid finished in second in 10.4, Metabo Milwaukee 12.6 seconds. If your hands are sweaty or you're wearing gloves, trying to activate a switch on some of the grinders can be very difficult. And the Warrior switch takes quite a bit of force at 10.3 pounds. When it comes to a switch, it's not just the pressure, but it's also the ergonomics. If you fit your thumb to the shape of the button and push, it's not going to go anywhere. You actually have to push down on the bottom of the button while you're pushing forward and then rotate it in order to lock it on. You pretty much need one hand to hold the grinder and one hand to activate the switch. And the switch on the wind takes a lot less force to activate compared to the Warrior at only 5.8 pounds. Compared to the Warrior, the wind is a lot easier to use. In order to maintain a grip on the button, you do have to push inward a little bit in order to activate the switch. The wind can be easily activated with just one hand. And the Black & Decker only takes 6.5 pounds. I really like the design of the Black & Decker quite a bit. The cutout for the thumb makes it very easy to get a grip, even if the thumb is a little bit sweaty or dirty. Just like the Black & Decker, the Porter Cable takes 6.5 pounds of force. There's just not much of a bump out on the switch, which makes it difficult to activate. And the Rigid is about the same as the Porter Cable at 6.4 pounds. The Ridge is hard to handle with one hand because it has the largest circumference in the lineup at 8 and a quarter inches. But if your hands are large, you can easily grip it with one hand and the switch is easy to work with. And the Roby takes the least amount of force yet at 5.4 pounds. This style of grip does cause the Roby to be longer than most of the other tools, but it's extremely easy to use. And the Dewalt takes the least amount of force at 4.8 pounds. And the switch on the Dewalt has enough of a carve out, making switch activation very easy with a direct pushing motion. Applying 5.2 pounds of squeezing force on a paddle switch sure seems a lot easier than a slide switch on a pipe handle. Only three pounds of force to activate the Milwaukee's paddle switch. And the paddle style switch and the more user-friendly handle size makes the Milwaukee very easy to manage. 5.5 pounds for the Hilti. Just like the Dewalt, the Hilti's done a great job designing the shape and functionality of the switch. 3.7 pounds for the Makita. Unfortunately, the switch in the Makita is just not the easiest to work with. You have to apply inward pressure on the switch while you're pushing it to the on position. So you might have a difficult time if your hands are sweaty or dirty. Over the course of a tool's lifetime, you'll have to deal with the power switch hundreds or even thousands of times. 
and a Milwaukee takes the least amount of force at only three pounds. However, from working with each of the angle grinders, I found that Swiss design is a bigger factor than force. While rating ergonomics is highly subjective, I found the Ryobi to have the best ergonomics with the best possible rating of one. Black and Decker, Metabo, and Milwaukee are also very user-friendly with a rating of 1.5. So which angle grinder is the best? If you consider all of the non-subjective categories, the Makita came out on top with an average finish of 2.2. Milwaukee averaged 3.4 and Metabo 4.8. So the more expensive grinders came out on top. If it's all about power and performance and you don't really care about the other categories, the Makita came out on top on both performance tests. The very affordable Rigid had an average finish of 2. Metabo and DeWalt 3.5. If price was not a factor and I had to choose just one tool, I would definitely go with the Makita. It's an amazing angle grinder and it cuts extremely fast. If it's all about the value, $60 for the Rigid seems like a pretty good price. If it's all about price and you really don't care too much about performance, why not just go with the Harbor Freight Warrior? It seems like a pretty decent tool, especially for $15. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.